Asha Gomez learned a lot about food, culture, and community in her family's kitchen in Kerala, India. That has served her well in her adopted hometown of Atlanta. Today, she's chef and owner of Cardamom Hill Restaurant, where the cuisines of southern India and the American South form a perfect culinary union. Cardamom Hill has been honored by both Bon Appetit and Southern Living magazines. And Chef Gomez was a semi-finalist for Food & Wine Met's People's Choice Best New Chef. Welcome to The Dish. Thank you so much. This it's looks Shariga. really great. And smells really great. Yeah. <laughs> I wish we could. We had smell-o-vision. That's the one thing about spices. They're very aromatic. And that's what Indian cuisine really is all about. What have you brought for us this morning? So we have here pork vindaloo, which is a dish that dates back a couple of hundred years uh, with the Portuguese influence that came to the coastal region, southern coastal region of India, starting from Goa, stretching all the way down to Kerala, where I'm from. Um, we have a cardamom cornbread. Wow. This is um, my take on the Indian South meeting the American South, and actually showing the synergy between the two regions. Um, we're closer to the equator. We grow the same kinds of produce, and they're tremendous synergies. We have rice in common, cane syrup in common, pork in common. Um, so it's been a fascinating journey, just kind of bringing that all together. We have a green bean uh, virica, which is a stir fry with thyme. Uh, our take on a fried green tomato, mm -hmm. it's a green tomato fritter, a peach chutney, and a spiced uh, bread pudding. Poor Anthony has listened all week to me say, I'm so excited to have a fellow Indian on, on this dish. And I'm also from Kerala, so I know this type of food very well. Yes. But what I found interesting in reading about you also is that, you know, people don't realize that South Indian food is so different from North Indian food. Our cuisine is much less recognized. Absolutely. It's very underdiscovered under cuisine. And I think there's this huge misnomer when you think of Indian food. You think tandoori chicken, you think naan, you're thinking a buffet line. And I think Indian food is so diverse and we are so rich in culinary history, 6,000 years of culinary history. And this particular region had Portuguese, Dutch, French influences. And so we didn't grow up eating tandoori chicken and naan there. We grew up th eating things like appam, which are steamed rice cakes, because our predominant crop in that region was rice, not gluten. Mm. So that's why we don't do naan or roti in our restaurant. You moved to New York when you were 16. Yes, I did. And worked in your mom's catering company. Was that where you got your start, really? Um, yes. You know, she she always loved to cook, and that is the trajectory that she took when we came to migrated to this country. So I did help her in her kitchen, yes. You're the first chef that has ever had a spa that happened to serve food. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, like you, you say that choose, food chose you. What do you mean by that? Um, well, I was in the spa industry for a good 18 to 20 years, and uh, I had a spa in Atlanta called Neem Tree Spa, which... Um, highlighted Ayurveda and wanted to touch all the senses and because I love to cook so much every treatment would end with a meal that I had prepared. Uh, in 2008 we were a casualty of the times, we were a luxury good, mm -hmm. we had to close our doors. In that transitional period people were asking more about the food <laughs> than when I was going to open my next spa and I started a supper club that three years later um, we have evolved into Cardamom Hill and numerous other projects. That, that's a fascinating transition. You're going to be involved in what's called a Minority Chef Summit, correct? Yes. What is that exactly? Um, the founder of the summit's name is Erica Davis, who's a fantastic pastry chef and a dear friend. And she has put together um, um, an event that's going to take place in the Bahamas that brings together minority chefs from different cultures. Um, and we're going to come in and talk about food and the diversity that we bring to the landscape mm -hmm. of cuisine. Oh, that should be such a fascinating it's going to be really, really fun. Now, you also opened up the third space in Atlanta. Yes. What is the third space? The third space is a space that we call the culinary conversation. And it is a space that separates the wall. The wall that separates the diner from the chef is removed. And you get to interact directly with the chef when you're having your meal. Uh, so they're very intimate, private experiences. Different chefs from all over the country come and cook in the space. Well, we want to hand you this dish get your signature on it. And as we do that, we want to ask you if you could have this meal with anyone in the world, who would that person be? Uh, for me, it would be John T., uh, who is um, with the Southern Foodways Alliance, and he is a culinary think tank when it comes to all things Southern. And so I would love to share this meal with him. Well, now that I've had your vindaloo, I want your massage, too. <laughs> so, Asha Gomez, thank you so much. For more on Chef Gomez and the dish, head to our website at cbsthismorning.com.